Part 16. Fluff and Smoke. In this moment of absolute terror, Cat Parker saw her life in flashes. Time seemed to slow down, pausing in syncopated bursts of movement and memory. Atin's massive wings beat a cadence as steady as a pendulum. The light in the dragon's sanctum shifted to darkness and back again to the rhythm of its wings, mocking the rhythm of her life. But what life, really? Her last two years were defined by dangerous shadow runs and drinking away the memories of teeth, forced to remember each time her foot struck the pavement. She had found her only respite in a burn-scarred kitten named Fluff. Now, her chance for justice came down to this moment of fear and determination on the green scrap of Salish Shadid, punched into the concrete wilds of Seattle. A slice of light cut across the room. In its flashes, she could distinctly make out the faces around her. Marshall Parker lay sprawled across the wooden stage. Opposite him, several members of the Orc delegation Cat robbed just days ago stared at the medical team. Recognition took hold over their faces. Some fumbled for weapons, while others shifted to shield their delegate. Then, R.C. hefted the RPG onto his shoulder and fired. The rocket launcher cut a white contrail as it streaked towards the dragon's roost, missing the beast wide. The rocket surged into the wall beyond, and detonated in a cacophonous din. Ateen's wings knifed in one direction, and back again with all the force, grace, and certainty of fate. It spread its maw, snarling at the mess the Shadow Runners made of its lair. Beside Cat, J.T. sucked in the suddenly dry air and choked out, Here we go! And this time, Cat was ready. Ateen lunged at Cat. She dove out of the way, grabbing her prized metal briefcase with one hand and still firing with the other. Ateen pulled up just before hitting the ground, one jagged claw connected with the decker's back razoring through her dock wagon gear, down to the form-fitting armor beneath. Cat lurched to her knees. Her briefcase tumbled away. Then, the dragon was airborne again, circling for another attack. Kit soon. Cat screamed for support, but the shaman did not move. Sweat drenched her collar from the effort of holding back Ateen's powerful magic. Cat whipped her head around, desperate to find some sort of backup. R.C. had already turned his attention to the orcs who seemed to be organizing a counterattack. The adept freed his katana from a nearby duffel and leapt towards the orcs. J.T. held an AK-97 in each hand. He moved, firing wildly at the dragon. His bullets did nothing to slow the beast down. Hegemon! Finally, she saw the rigger press himself into one of a dozen alcloves ringing in the room and link to his rigger control box. With his free hand, he kept up the fire on the circling dragon. Drones are live! Hegemon screamed back over the crack of gunfire. They have security pinned down in the hallway but I don't think I can punch through. Cat's AK-97 clicked uselessly. They needed more firepower if they hoped to have a chance. She scanned the room for her briefcase. It lay forgotten on the other end of the round sanctum. She just might be able to reach it if she ran hard enough, and if the dragon didn't get her first. Ateen's clawed feet caught a crossbeam high along the room's vaulted ceiling, the beast hung there, assessing targets. Cat started forward. Her feet churned beneath her with speed she never thought she had. Then came the crackle of splintering wood. The beast detached. The shadow of the thing darkened the ground beneath her feet. She ran even harder, moving so fast that she thought she might lose her balance. But her effort wasn't enough to outrun a dragon. Her self-preservation instincts clenched her stomach and raised the hair on the back of her neck. She stumbled, then dove into the closest alcove. Ateen strafed along the path she had just been. The dragon roared bitterly, banked, 
and rose. Not yet, Slitch. I'm still breathing. But Ateen hadn't missed entirely. Cat felt a sudden wetness and realized her cybernetic leg was torn open and leaking fluids. The knee joint responded haltingly when she tried to bend it. Cat wouldn't be running for that briefcase any time soon. The Decker dragged herself backward into the shadows of the deep alcove. If she couldn't get to that briefcase, maybe she could help in another way. In homes like these, jackpoints were as common as outlets. She fished around and was rewarded with a main line connection. She synced up the system security in a flash. Hallway cameras showed her Hajimon's drones lying down, suppressing fire in the main hallway leading to the sanctum. Ateen's security team was pinned down and using the doorways for cover as its members tried to shoot the drones out of the sky. She initiated a priority security lockdown and the hallway doors shivered shut, locking Ateen's detail in the rooms beyond. Something echoed in her head. A voice of pure panic cut through her semi-conscious meat to reach her jacked-in brain. The voice seemed to hit her in slow motion. Cat! Look out! It was JT's voice. He was screaming. Cat yanked the cord out of the data port, shut her eyes, and rolled. Ateen slammed a claw into the alcove, pulverizing the spot where she was an instant ago. Cat stopped rolling and opened her eyes. She was sitting on the cold, marble floor between Ateen's powerful haunches. The dragon loomed over her. Cat grimaced and freed her Colt L-36 pistol, snapping off rounds that plinked to the marble floor like acid rain. This didn't feel like that night in Salish Shiri. It felt different. Wrong somehow. She threw a longing look towards the metal briefcase far beyond her grasp. Then she looked for Kitsune yet again. The shaman remained frozen, battling forces Cat could see, and perhaps, as Kit soon believed, even comprehend. Suddenly a figure resolved at the edge of her vision. R.C. flashed downward out of the sky and buried his katana in the beast's back. Pain mixed with surprise clouded Ateen's eyes, only to be quickly replaced by a terrible rage. It turned with a quickness that shocked her. A guttural cry that seemed to rip out her soul emanated from its massive mouth. The beast shook off R.C. like the troll was nothing more than a toy. R.C. tumbled end over end and crashed into the distant wall with a crack. He didn't move again. Cat cried out involuntarily. Then the beast turned back toward her. Ateen's fangs dripped hot saliva. The smell of rot and death were thick on its leathery tongue. Thin lips curved into a wisp of a grin. Cat gritted her teeth and said, You remember me now, don't you? But the dragon's eyes betrayed no hint of memory, only curiosity and anger. It twitched forward as the sanctum doors burst open. Two drones looped in and unleashed their payload on the dragon. Ateen roared and with bone-jarring force leapt into the sky. The drones seemed to catch Ateen off guard. For the first time, Kitsune broke free of her trance. She called out, We have to keep the pressure on. Don't give it time to prepare another spell. Cat struggled to her feet. She looked up in time to see the first Guardian drone spiral out of the sky. R.C. still wasn't moving, but J.T. had found the RPG launcher and was quickly readying a second shot. Cat swore under her breath and staggered to the case. She opened it, relieved to see the weapon was still intact in its foam casing. The etching on the weapon's gray shell read Ares MP. JT's RPG rocket leaped into the air as Kitsune threw the full weight of her magic into a powerball. The double explosion rocked the room. Ateen twisted in the air and faltered for a moment. Then it lashed out with its tail, knocking the final Guardian drone to the earth. Ateen wasn't done yet. The dragon arched its back and let loose a bolt of lightning that caught JT full in the chest. 
His clothes erupted in flames, and the one-man army tumbled to the ground, gasping for breath. Suddenly, a blur of white fur darted into the room. The dragon snapped its head around, roaring even louder than before. Fluff, no! Cat cried out desperately. Ateen dove straight for the kitten, its mouth opened wide to claim the morsel. But Kit soon got there first. The shaman stepped in front of the kitten and turned, shielding it from Ateen. The dragon's maw shut violently on Kitsun, biting the shaman in half. A guttural howl started in Cat's stomach and worked its way up through her lips, carrying with it all the pain and anger she'd felt over the last two years. She trained the Ares MP laser on Ateen as the beast tried to climb back towards the rafters. The gun spit a steady red line that struck the dragon in the back and continued straight through to the other side. Ateen's massive wings shuddered and stopped. The dragon slipped backward and fell, its freakish, otherworldly, prehistoric scream ending in a tremendous boom. Dirt, dust, and silence filled the space of its echo. Cat felt joy rush over her, brief and sudden as a splash of cold water. She turned to seek out Kitsune and remembered her friend was dead. She fell to her knees as much out of pain as exhaustion. She could hear the remnants of Ateen's security detail outside, thumping against the hall doors. There wasn't much time to escape. Hegemon, fire up whatever drones you have left in the city, Master. They should be able to punch a path to us and help us cover our retreat. Her voice sounded tired and strained. Hegemon wasn't listening. He knelt over Kitsune's remains. His shoulders rocked violently. Cat gathered up the strength to join him, their plight momentarily forgotten. Fluff climbed into Cat's arms and licked her once, then twice again. Cat said, We really shook the pillars of heaven, didn't we, Fluff? Cat, you better see this. R.C. could barely stand his head, hung low, and his right arm was bent at an impossible angle. He sounded serious, depressed even. J.T. stood beside him. The samurai gingerly probed the pink flesh where the lightning bolt had nearly ended him. Cat set Fluff down and limped over to join the two men beside the dragon's carcass. The stink of the dead thing was overpowering. Cat tried to gather enough saliva to spit on the beast, but her mouth was too dry. Then she tried to kick it, but her cyber leg wouldn't cooperate. Finally, she gave up and moaned. It's over, okay? The fracken thing is dead. Wait, Cat. Watch, JT said. She looked, and she saw what they did. Ever so slowly, the beast's features were shifting, softening. The snout, once long and sharp, began to round. The lips began to fatten. He's reverting to metahuman form. This isn't dragon behavior. This is Drake behavior. I thought Artine was... A dragon, Fluff said behind them. The cat's voice was low and menacing. All of them spun around to see the kitten growing and changing much faster than the dead thing before them. As they watched, Fluff shed her coat of burn-scarred fur to reveal charcoal scales beneath. She ballooned outward, first to the size of a dog, then a man, a troll, and much, much larger. The real Ateen stared down at the four shadow runners. Her teeth gleamed white in the skylight. Wisps of gold like smoke tendrils ran up from her black snout. Cat stared open-mouthed at the thing. That was her good luck charm, her pet. Ateen struck Snake quick and stopped just short of Cat's face. Yes, Cat, I do remember you, she hissed. Then, in a blink of an eye, she swallowed Cat Parker in two bites as the Ares MP laser clattered to the ground. The others stepped back, staring. Ateen grumbled. Now I suppose I should thank you for a job well done. 
That drink smoke has been a thorn in my side for many years now. Yet I could not be seen as personally challenging him. Artin spat the last word as though something foul had taken root in her mouth. It took a while for any of them to screw up the courage to speak. R.C. was the first to regain his composure. May we at least know why? Artin's shrug was more like a ripple. She unfurled her wings and then brought them back in again. Smoke belonged to Dunkelzan. Any action against it was by extension an action against my lore master. I have no desire to face him directly. Hegemon stepped forward, squinting in disbelief. You're a dragon? <laughs> that seems obvious, Artin replied. Then she regarded the runners matter-of-factly and added, You didn't really think you could slay a dragon by yourselves, did you? The three surviving men looked to one another before deciding not to answer that question. Artin sighed. Ah, forgive me. It seems I have no discreet way back to the city other than the way I came. The three of you will take me back to Bellevue, and then you may return to Mr. Strouther to receive your payment. They stared at the dragon, but again did not speak. Well, let's get to it, shall we? I'm sure you have relocation plans to attend to. Berlin, was it? The dragon shrank back down to the form of a kitten and bounded toward the door.